You're watching Influence Me Wednesday with Morale All Things Hair. And I'm so excited. What? Because it is our second season, and I'm here with my co host, D. Hardy <laughs> of Elevation Hair Studio. How you doing, D? Doing well, yourself. I am doing great, sir, when I tell you. And then we are here with Shannon Sawsbury. And when I tell you, you have to hear this story. Oh, my God. Okay, so now, the story that Shannon is going to bring to you guys today. Uh, when I tell you, you know, it could be a nightmare to many, many individuals. And so, you do want to kind of take heed. Um, we want to give you guys some things, some red flags to look out for. Okay, we wanted to bring some things to your attention. But now, if you must take things to the next level, and sometimes we have to, then we also, too, want to go ahead and give you the tips provided so you'll know to do so, okay? So, Ms. Shannon, how are you doing today? I'm good. Okay, so now, can you go ahead with our um, viewers and just explain to them pretty much your story and what happened? Okay, you want me to hold the mic? Uh, you can't. Okay. <laughs> go ahead and just take it from <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so... Um, Last year in March, I went to a stylist that was recommended to me by a friend on Instagram and for the popular bohemian faux locks. So I went to her in March, and I had the faux locks in my hair from March up into October. And between March and October, I had two um, perimeter touch-ups, uh, which is what she recommended. So um, one day, this particular stylist who did my hair, she was doing a live video on Instagram, and she was telling everyone how she was locking up her hair. So I commented below, and I said, well, I want to go ahead and lock up my hair since I love the Bohemian Faux Locks so much. Would you be able to use what I already have in my hair to lock my hair up? And she said, no, those Faux Locks is a mixture of synthetic and human hair, I would have to take those out and install 100% human hair. So, proceeded to make the appointment, paid the deposit, which was a substantial amount, about $500, so that she could order the 100% human hair, because that's what you need to lock up um, my hair. So, in October, I went to her, and she installed the permanent bohemian locks, which was similar to the faux locks, but it was 100% human hair. So I was happy with what she had done, and then it was time to, uh, she said, well, you get one free um, touch-up that's included in the price. So the total price that I paid her for the initial um, install was like $850 wow. or something like that. So when I got there, I had already paid her $500, and then I paid her an additional $350. So between... October and December, I had sent her numerous of text messages about setting up my appointment for my free touch-up. I was texting her so-called assistant, who's her cousin, and her, and I kept getting the run around and run around and run around. And there were red flags before on her customer service, even with the faux bohemian locks, but I just was like, hey, she's popping. Everybody wants to come to her because I mean getting an appointment with her was a task at hand like I Booked my faux bohemian locks appointment in January and I couldn't get to her until March. Wow So she was popping for her faux bohemian locks like m my friend that went with her She's a celebrity makeup artist. So she was talking about her on her YouTube channels Everybody was asking about her so she was getting a lot of clap from my friends so when I went, when it was time for me to get my free touch-up, I emailed, text, no response. And I was about to graduate with my master's, so I wanted my hair to be cute for my graduation. So she was doing another live video. Wow. I commented why she was doing a live, like, hey, I've been trying to get in touch with you to get my touch-up, and my graduation is in two weeks. Can you please? get me in. So after I did that for the second time, she finally got me in. And every time I would go to her, it would be excuses after excuses about why she didn't respond. Her cousin is not a good assistant. She's going to get somebody else and all of that. Let me ask you this. <clears throat> so now, at any point in time, being on Instagram, 
through any of the other lives? Was anyone else responding that they had a hard time getting in touch with her? Yes, it was people like when she would post pictures of her work, people would be like, hey, I reached out to you. And um, before I got my faux, I mean, my permanent bikini locks, that same Freeman referred me had an issue with her. And she stopped going to her because of the same issue, lack of customer service. The assistant wasn't responding, then she was responding, then it was a mix up between the two of them and the lack of communication. So they had some words. Wow. And then when they got into it, she lost a lot of customers because like I said, my friend was basically sponsoring her for free because she has a lot of followers because she's a wow. celebrity makeup artist. Anyway, so I had already paid my money. She says her deposits are non-refundable, so I went ahead with the service. So after I got my touch-up in December, um, I made an appointment in February for another touch-up in April. Once I made my appointment and paid my for my services, because now she makes you pay for your services up front, wow. um, and so through her website, which is linked to PayPal. Um, so then I was emailing her, texting her like, hey, when I come for my touch-up in April, I want to get color. I want to get a color on my locks. I also put it in the special notes. You know, when you make an appointment, you can put special notes to the mm -hmm. stylist. I did that as well. Never got a response. So the day that I went for my touch-up in April, I was like, hey, where, I want to get my color. She was like, oh, shoot, you know, just another excuse. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't really know, just whatever. So I went ahead and let her do my touch-up. And the whole time I was getting my touch-up, she was talking, well, what color do you want? So I'm pulling up stuff on Pinterest, showing her pictures. And she was like, well, I can't use regular color on your lock since it's so thick and it's 100% um, human hair. We have to use this special wax dye. And she was like, it's going to be permanent. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I'll, whatever. She was like, well, I'll sit. She was like, when I finish um, getting the kids to bed tonight, I'll look up some color um, samples and send them to you. And then you could come back next week. She was like, you don't even have to make an appointment. Just come by because it's not going to take me that long. So from April up until three weeks ago, I had been texting her and commenting under her pictures and stuff on Instagram about my color. So finally, I was like, you know what? Let me just go to someone else because she's not responding about the color. So I went to one loctician to get a consultation for color. And when I sat in the chair, she said, are these faux bohemian locks or permanent? And I said, they're permanent. She said, this is not right. She was like, like, are you going to cut the extensions out? Are you going to continue with this? She's like, because pretty much when you cut these extensions out, you're going to have to cut your hair and start back over with fresh, like, permanent locks. So she was mm -hmm. like, and I can do that for you. So I thought maybe she wanted money. You know what I'm saying? Yes. On top of the money that I was willing to pay her for the color. So I was like, okay, well, let me, you know, let me think about it. So I went to another loctician, not even... They had no idea what I had been through or what the previous loctician had said, and they said the same exact thing. So that loctician cut one of the um, lock, permanent locks out, and she discovered that my hair wasn't even locking up. It was just matting, like matting like if you leave braids in too long from the grease and the lint, just everyday activity. And I know that people say, well, that's what a lock is. It's just matted hair or whatever. But it was supposed to be forming into locks as it was growing out. And it wasn't. It was just like hair, matte hair. It wasn't even locking up. So I reached out to the stylist, and I basically told her what the loctician had told me. And I asked her for a $450 refund. Somebody, she texted me back and said, that's fine. I'm sorry that you're not happy with your locks. I'll give you a re refund. Cool. So three days after that, the stylist called me and was like, hey, I just read your text messages. That wasn't me responding. That was my assistant. So why is your assistant texting me from your phone when your assistant has their own line that she's texted me off before? Exactly. So she was like, well, what, what is the problem? So I told her excuse me, what the stylists were saying and how there was no parts, there was no rhyme or rhythm. Mm -hmm. It was just like she grabbed hair and interlocked the 100% the human hair into my hair. She's like, well, everybody does locks 
differently. And my lock style is Rastafarian. And I'm thinking to myself, well, your faux bohemian locks was a Rastafarian. So why would your permanent bohemian locks be Rastafarian? And she's like, you can't compare my locks to other locticians because I do mine different. Regardless of whether you absolutely you do them different, there should be some type of part, some type of flow. There was nothing. So anyway, she said I could come in so she could look at my hair. So basically, she wants to just do the big chop, which I eventually had to do. And I was like, no, I want you to take the extensions out and then pick my pick out my hair because I want to try to save as much hair as I possibly could. So now, were you able to get an appointment with her? She made an appointment. Okay. And she, it was for 9.30 a.m. that one Monday morning, two, two or three Mondays ago. Mm-hmm. At the middle of the night, that Sunday night, she texted me about 11 p.m. and said, hey, I need to change your appointment to 5.30 p.m. I said, fine, okay, I'll be there at 5.30. About 3.30, 3.45 Monday morning, Monday afternoon, she texted me, like, oh, I had a family emergency. I'm not going to be able wow. to do your take your locks out or mm-hmm. even sit with you because basically I wanted a consultation to figure out what to do going forward next and she had offered me she said you can either get the 450 back or we can see what we can do and or I'll give you uh, two protective styles for free for the 450 instead wow. of getting the 450 back and I was like well I don't know because at this point I don't even want You're to touch my, with I don't touch my hair so she called text me at 345 and said hey one of my stylists is going to have to take out your um, locks. Mm-hmm. Here's your address. There was no name, no business name. It was just an address. I'm not going to drive an hour and 15 minutes to somebody. I don't know. For all I know, you could be sending me to somebody to. But you know, the trust is going. Drag going. me or whatever, rob me. I don't know. Not saying that she's that type of person, but. But the you, trust is going. Right. To the if hair she hair would have said, hey, I'm sending you to the Elevation Hair Studio, this is the address, I probably would have been more comfortable. That, but she just sent me an address and no stylist name or nothing. So I text her back and I said, I'm not driving an hour 15 minutes and five o'clock traffic to go to some styles that I don't even know anything about. And I was so, like, I'm not going tonight. She was like, and in that text message at 3.30, she was like, I need your response immediately because I'm turning my phone off at 6 o'clock. Oh, wow. So, and I kept all the text messages and so I said, can you take me can your stylist take me in the morning? I can go in the morning. And I was like, is she going to just remove the extensions or is she going to pick out my hair? No response. So by that time, I was frustrated. I was in Absolutely. tears. I, understand I went back to that second loctician. We took a few of the permanent locks out just to see. Because, you know, sometimes your edges are different from the front of your hair. Absolutely. I mean, from the, front, from the back. You know, it might not be, it might be okay back here, but... Then in front. So she took some out back here, the same thing. So by this time, we're going through a text message arguing battle. And I was like, you know what? Just give me, I want all my money because back now. Because at this point, you realize that the hair has been damaged. Mm-hmm. You know, all the way through. And now you're dealing with someone that is a licensed loctician. And so at this point, you know, you had to make what type of decision? Well, the point, the, the issue was, I couldn't even get to the stylist who even, who installed my permanent bikini locks. Like, she wouldn't even even see me. And I'm like, you did my hair. Why should you be sending me to somebody else? Absolutely. She kept beating around the bush. So we got into a really nasty text message battle. I never discredited her work. I said, your faux bohemian locks are fine. I said, but these aren't. And I sent her pictures, and the same pictures that I've shown you. Yes. Um, And was letting her know the problem so she got you know really nasty or whatever and she just said i'm not giving your money back either you take it to protect the styles or nothing at all wow and she was like were you was happy with your permanent bohemian locks and she forwarded me something a video that i posted on my instagram page and i said yes i was fine until i found out they were wrong i would have known but, that you installed them incorrectly but now you were happy with the style of right. the locks. But, not but the to, hair care underneath was her end and result. You did not receive Right. It. So if I would have continued going to her, even after even after my hair would continue to grow with the ex- extensions, I would have still had to cut my hair. Absolutely. Okay, so now, um, so D. Hardy, in an instance, you know, when it comes to 
Um, what would you advise, say, in, in, pertain, in pertaining to the consultation? What are some things that initially you possibly would have done initially? As the lactation that did the install yes. or as the licensed lactation? As the lactation that did the install. You know, it's imperative uh, morale that throughout your consultation, all parties are clear. You have a clear and definitive understanding of what the, the client is asking, and equally, the client has a clear and definitive understanding of what I perceive and then what I intend to provide. And there was a barrier. Communication was broken at some point, yes. naturally. Um, and I'm not faulting you. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Nor am I going to fault the other lactician. But at some point, you guys had a lapse in communication where either or either the receiver didn't receive the message, the intended message, or the deliverer did not deliver the intended message. Um, subsequently, you know, you've fallen into a situation that you're not happy with. But consultations are extremely important, and it kind of takes you back even into the workforce as to where, when you're in customer service, mm -hmm. someone asks you a question. Prior to answering that question, you can repeat the question back to ensure that your response is tailored to what is, you know that exchange so you want to be extremely clear yes. and cognizant and it just really at the base the core the fundamentals is consulting and being clear and communicating in an orderly fashion and i think that's what that could have prevented possibly um the monotony of the back and forth the disgruntledness the poor customer service and um, but you know what? I just saw a couple of things. Um, one is how everything was portrayed on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you have to be careful. You know, we, we always want to follow Instagram and kind of, that's our way to review. Mm -hmm. That's our way to review. And um, But sometimes that does not work because you can put on a, a facade. A you show. know, a, a show. Exactly. And that's exactly what she did. Um, and so when she did the live, um, the previous pictures, because again, the style itself, it, it, you know, will be beautiful. Mm -hmm. But then how is the hair care? Everyone is not into hair care. They are not. And so, um, and so one of the things that I asked when I talked to Shannon regarding her story, I said, well, um, did she stay, you know, because she went and saw her a couple of times. I said, was that upon her discretion? And she said, yes. You know, and but now Shannon would not know. You know, Shannon would not know that she's a, it, she's a consumer. And so as a hair care provider, that was the first thing that stood out. Because from what was it, March to for the faux bohemian locks, it was from March into October. And then I got the permanent bohemian locks installed in October when I took the, the fake ones out. Okay, and you just took them out just a few weeks ago. And I took I took the permanent ones out maybe three weeks ago. Okay, so we're saying from October up October, until three weeks ago. Okay, and to um, June. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how many times did you see her? From October to twice. Okay, so twice. That is, you know, the hair care. You know, she did not have her to come in. She did not advise her about any treatments. She did not, again, yes, locks, I mean, the formation of a lock is matted hair, yes. That's how it's consumed. But then there's a formation, there's healthiness, you know, that definitely was not included in that, you know. And so... Um, Let me interject for just a moment, because what you're saying, ultimately, and I totally agree, you have technique, and yes. you have outcome. You better say it. Multiple people can achieve an outcome. But yes. did you adhere to the appropriate technique to achieve that outcome? Absolutely. And it sounds to me definitely that the technique deplorable. Right. Okay. And I and there was another red flag, like when she does her uh, her famous uh, faux bohemian locks, every client that she does, she posts a video, takes pictures, puts a whole bunch of hashtags up on the picture. But I noticed that she never posted my permanent bohemian locks. And I'm like, if this is something that you say that right. you know how to do, then why didn't you expose my my permanent bohemian locks as you do your full bohemian locks? So that was a, after I went back and looked at her page, I noticed that. So that was another red flag because I feel like she didn't post them because obviously they wasn't done right. Absolutely. Absolutely. No. Deception. And you know, and back to piggyback on what you had stated earlier, Morale, um, 
um, even in terms of projecting images via social media as we often use social media outlets to display our, our craft, you have filters. So you have to then start to question, are you actually seeing the end result? Absolutely. Or is this a camouflage yes. or a transition, so to say, of what I want you to what I want to project Absolutely. and have you believe. Future conversations for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, really. And um, so, so at the end result, what did what decision did you make? Well, I've gone to um, the courthouse to file the paperwork to file the civil suit against her. Okay. So I'm gonna sue her for the amount that I paid for the hair, and you know, grievances, however much I've had to pay to get this, plus my friend who's as stylist as mm -hmm. you guys are. She recommended that, you know, once I find a stylist who can help with the, you know, the maintenance and upkeep and the growth of my hair and to find out how much the maintenance is going to be like on a two week basis and mm -hmm. include that into the civil lawsuit as well for at least a year or two years. So she thinks that I should, you know, file a civil suit for enough to cover me to get my hair done for the next two years until it grows back out to where I'm happy with. No. Outcome. Okay, well, there also too mess with anguish. I, I mean, when I tell you, um, I mean, your hair definitely you were you were not starting at ground zero, right? And to make that decision and okay, I'm about to get a big job. Okay, that's you know, I mean, you were forced to make that decision, right? And so the mental anguish that follows behind that, you should definitely be able to add that. Yeah, as well. pain and suffering because I cried for like two days. Like because when I went to her. I was natural. I haven't had a perm. I can't even tell you the last time I had. What was perm. the length of your hair? I, it was a big fro. I wow. had like a big, you know, big fro. I probably could put a headband around it or do a twist out. So it having to chop off that amount of hair was devastating, and I just kept telling myself, "Well, it's just hair. It'll grow back. It's just hair." So counsel yourself, right? And I so add those charges. Right. Right. And so I've gotten a lot of compliments. Hey, you know this fits your face because. After I did the big chop, I didn't even want to come out the house. I was Absolutely. ordering caps and all wigs. I was just like, I can't. But I've gotten comfortable with it since you I've were cut forced it. to become comfortable, right, with it. You know, and and that's the reason why um, it's important, you know, on, on platforms such as this for us to discuss the many things. You know, when it comes to our industry, we don't understand the severity when it comes to being licensed, being a hair care provider. It's beyond just the style. It's beyond just the look. Um, is there anything else, Dean, that you would like to add? You know, I empathize with you. Um, mm -hmm. And I've done this on the segment prior in one of our recordings. I apologize to you on behalf of the hair Thank care you. industry, us Absolutely. as professionals um, collectively. Yes. And I wish you nothing but the best Thank in you. your journey going forward. Um, for the viewers, what would you have done? Yes. You know, I want to hear comments. I want to see the comments. What nominal amount would you add to such such lawsuits yes. in an attempt to recover? Do you ever fully recover? I want to hear from you. Uh, no, absolutely. And this is something that we definitely want to follow you with. You know, um, definitely bring you back to the platform. And, um, and we cannot disclose her information. You know, this is... This young lady's, um, Ms. Shannon, this is her side of the story, you know, but respectfully, you know, we definitely understand, you know, as being hair care providers. And again, we, I want to, we would like to thank you for being a part of the show today, um, giving your story and helping others not to come back this type of issue again. Okay, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. And so again, my name is Morello Kane. Morello All Things Hair Dot Media. It's the hair debate. This is where we come to debate, debunk, and discover all things hair.